Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being your show, we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Another great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I love that the legends pop up in John's manor, and you're like, oh, okay, so we're back present day. Open the door, and hell's right there. It's like, oh, nope, they're in that pocket dimension. So that's cool. And obviously, and it, you kind of feel so bad because initially everyone's like, okay, Gideon must be exhausted. Like, she kind of screwed up. Like, we have a plan this meeting and just figure out everything. So, I thought that was so interesting. Um, at first I was like, oh, that, you kind of feel bad because it's like, oh, because of our human emotions and stuff like that, she's not the calculated person because she chose here instead of ra rather than like the actual present day in John's manner and stuff like that. So... Obviously, Gideon was feeling a little down, and Gary was there to kind of pep her up. Uh, but then, Gary, like, she does point out something where it's just kind of like, well, she understands where Evil Gideon is coming from. Because the others are like, why is Evil Gideon trying to kill us? Like, we've saved the day. Like, yeah. But they're so caught up in, like, right, what they've done. Like, oh, we've done so much. We've saved so many lives. It's like, they forget what their original mission was, like, why they're meant to, they've, they've swerved so much, like, Ava's about preserving the timeline, but even she doesn't call out the legends, because she's been inducted in this for so long, she kind of forgets, like, right, like, you, the timeline is way off of what it used to be because of the legends, like, good and bad wise, like, the legends have made a lot of changes, and Gideon's all about, like, her original programming is all about, no, like, setting the timeline back to what it was, all, once again, the good, you know, regardless of the good that they've done or the bad, you know, well, the good that they've done or the bad that would have happened without their um, inter, uh, intervening, but, and Gary kind of gets that now, but I don't think he really, tr like, says that to the rest of the group who's still trying to figure it out, but, you know, I love that, you know, everyone's going through their issues, like, Zari and Nate are kind of awkward around each other. Well, at first, because he's like, oh, he wants to help out Virad, who's, you know, wants to ask Astra out. And it's like, yeah, he's got the clear head. Because I didn't even think about it at the time. It's like, oh, he's not getting high. Like, you know, they've been, like, on the run for so long. And, like, he hasn't really had an opportunity to get high or probably doesn't even have, like... Well, I think he had his supply of, like, stuff on him, didn't he? Or maybe, maybe all of it was on the Wave Rider when it blew up or whatever. But whatever the case may be, He's not, he's kind of more clear-headed and not as high, and he's just like, right, he wants to, he has clarity, and he wants to ask Astra out, because there's been something there for a while, and it seems like he's feeling it, and Astra's feeling it, uh, and Nate kind of, you know, tells him just to kind of be himself, and it's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, because things are serious between him and Zari, it's almost like Bayrod's become like, not only a time bro in the sense of, yeah, we were time buds, but also just like for the perspective of, he's kind of going to be like a future little brother-in-law, which I thought was kind of cute. And even Zari being like, oh, you know, because he was saying like what that makes them kind of like in-laws in a way too. And I'm like, it is kind of weird to think about, it, but I guess like the easiest way to think about it would be to think of Zari 2.0 as Zari 1.0's twin. I guess that'd be the weird way to think about it. Because they never really talk about it, but I guess the justification is it's not even them sharing the same body. It is like two separate bodies. I think it's kind of what that's implying. I mean, they were two separate people beforehand, so yeah, that's still true. So, like, because I get too caught up in, like, aren't you guys having... Because I guess in my head, anytime, like, um, they switch places, I'm in my head thinking, like, oh, the Zari switch bodies. But it's like, no, like, they just literally switch places in this plane of existence. So, I think that's the detail I always got caught up in, so I was like, oh, it's always weird. But it's like, no, like, you being a twin sister-in-law, like, that, that kind of makes a lot of sense. And I thought that was actually really sweet. Um, being like, oh yeah, you're like my best bud now too, so, um, I, I just thought that was sweet. Um, sadly, Ava and Sarah are kind of, well, Ava's the one kind of handling all the whole trying to figure out, plan everything out and figure out like, okay, so she's basically made a giant murder board trying to figure out this whole evil Gideon thing, um, Obviously, Gwen's uh, dealing with the fact is that he wants to save the person that he loves, but he can't. You know, like his greatest like regret, and you know, Sarah promised to help him uh, rectify that, and that's kind of what he's dealing with this episode. Like, because when he was like, obviously, hell does what it does; it messes with you. So he thought he heard Alex's voice, and 
open the door and that leads to the shenanigans that befall the house. I mean, especially because, like, well, Gideon and Gary are having sex, which I constantly forget about that third nipple because I saw, I was like, ah, uh, it messes with me too much. I'm like, like, anytime he was shirtless, I was like, I keep focusing on that. I can't help, like, I was like, oh, I, I keep forgetting about it. So every time I see him, I was like, oh, right, 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 that's there. And it just messes with me too much. But I love that, like, as, like, every, like, it was Sarah and Ava that first came in and they started screaming and then everyone else started coming in and just like, I was like, I love how the entire cast is here in this awkward moment, but Astra immediately figured out, because I was like, oh, this is kind of weird, like, what's happening here, and I'm like, what's going on, and it's a cursed crew, they're basically on Hell's reality TV show, and I'm like, I love it, so basically, um, this crew is creating like drama, like, you know, obviously, like, they lean into a lot of, like, the reality cliches slash tropes, um, because, like, Nate and Zari are weird around each other because, like, oh, they both have to take off their shirts and it's like, oh, this is weird. Oh, wow, you look like my Zari dressed like that. You look like John dressed like that. And it's just like, oh, this is weird. This is awkward. No, no, no. All we have to do is not be those friends who cross that line and, and basically have sex. It's like, as long as we don't, yeah, like, we'll be fine. Like, we don't even have to worry about it. It's like, yeah, like, we'd never hook up in, like, a million years. And I love that Zari kind of took that as an offense. Like, yeah, he's like, yeah, like, I mean, if did I say a million years? I mean, like, ten million years. Um, but it's like, obviously he was trying to say that in the perspective of like, cause she's like, whoa, 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 like, you know, me and your Zari are genetically the same. Like what's the only difference between us is our personality. So you're saying my personality is worse than her. Like she took offense from it, obviously not because initially it was just a perspective of like, right. Of course, like I would never sleep with you. That's kind of weird to do that, but it just turns into a drama thing of, oh, like you think I'm not good enough. And then eventually like her way of thinking shifting over to being like, oh, like, he must be second-guessing being with, uh, moving in with Zari. How dare he do that? I'm not going to let him do that to, uh, essentially her sister in a way. So, it's just interesting, like, how this, like, obviously it's, like, what a reality show does because, obviously, the crew, because, you know, that's always the thing about, like, I don't never know this for a fact, but people talk about like the behind the scenes of reality shows are like people will wink, wink and nudge you in certain directions just to make stuff happen just for the sake of like, oh, the drama on camera. Plus, reality shows are edited to be whatever you want them to be, you know. So I thought that was kind of uh, neat in the long run. Well, for one, I love Spooner's basically like wanting to make an alliance from the beginning. And you're just like, wait, what? She wants to make an alliance with Gwen. It's like, yeah, well. I probably would have never worked out with him. And then I love that she proceeds to spend the entire episode naked. With the exception of, at certain points, she's wearing, like, a, a bandana. At other points, she's constantly wearing her shoes. I love that she goes full nude, except the shoes stay on. And I guess it's because she talks about, like, oh, she's seen a ton of Survivor. I would think, if anything, naked and afraid. Uh, but I think it was interesting, like, she went full that. Like, she was that person. Like, oh, I'm going to be so extreme. I'm going to win this. I'm going to form all these alliances. I even love later on, she's like, yeah, whoever I form an alliance with, I'm going to end up betraying just because that's how that works. Um, Sarah turns into, like, your stereotypical, as she puts it, like, housewife of, like, putting on the earrings, dr wanting to drink, and just being like, oh, let's, let's go get, like, oh, like, honey, like, we should go, like, why work all the time? Like, she's like, I'm working all the time. Like, I want to just kind of, like, vacation and stuff like that we should get this particular space and it's like obviously like this version of sarah is just the most infuriating i mean obviously it's leaning into like sarah has a very lax personality sometimes especially like because she leaves a lot of the planning up to ava because a that is ava but like she kind of leaned into it even more this episode granted it was the cursed crew messing with everybody Astra trying to remedy the situation herself by trying to, like, get the crew to leave so she wouldn't go see the... Because basically you find out there is a um, reality crew that sold their soul to a demon and now they're basically stuck trying to basically capture a real moment and then that they um, instigate so much stuff. Like, obviously it's like the very, like, toxic negative side to, like, a reality show is what they kind of, like, you know, concocting things just to kind of fit whatever narrative that they want to craft. And so on top of all of that... Um, she went to go confront the guy, and I love that she went, like, obviously, you're in hell, so she has to lean into who she was beforehand, 
and she ends up trying to talk him out of like leaving the crew alone because she's like, yeah, this those souls that you're trying to torture, those are mine, so leave them alone. Sally Bayrod followed her, and I love the guy wants to like mess with. Uh, he's like, yeah, this place is full of nice guys who have issues. Like, because if you're super nice, they're the ones that have the deepest secret. And he looking at Bayrod's like, wait, do you really have no secrets? Ah, you're so chilled and laid back, and just kind of like, yeah. But they, they end up getting teleported in front of the cameras, which Bayrod was kind of like, no, 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 no. I was like, what was that reaction for? And so, sadly, it turns into a whole him and Astra thing because she's like, why? What'd you, like, come to me for? Like, why'd you follow me? Is it because you thought, like, I wasn't going to be strong enough? Because he's like, no, I figured this was going to be triggering. She was like, the fact is, like, what do you, what'd you think that the moment, like, I got back around my old world that I'd, I'd slip up again, that I wasn't strong enough to figure? He was like, no. Because um, she was talking about how weird he was acting. He was like, no, I think you're kind of projecting. And obviously, like, she was upset. I really love the little confessional thing like I love that it started with Gideon uh I love that she was like oh like I'm not gonna listen to like a a, a basic a voiceless body which I'm like you, you know that was written on purpose because you were at once in point of time a voiceless body uh not voiceless body a bo a voice without a body is what I'm, I meant to say jeez um and I love that she like put her human emotions aside and went full-blown calculating which I think that's the irony behind it none of them realized it her doing what she was doing was basically, she was becoming old Gideon again. She's basically turned into evil Gideon in front of their eyes, but they're so manipulated by the, the cursed crew that none of them saw it. They were so busy in their own thing. Like Nate, which I love that Nate's all like working out and stuff like that. Because that even part went through the episode, I'm like, is he tan? And even Zari talks about like, oh, that fake tan must be seeping through. I was like, I thought so. Because like, they're le like, he's obviously very, my immediate thought was like, Jersey Shore, but maybe, like, there's other, like, reality shows that might be, but obviously, like, I just love that the evil robot version of himself is all about being super muscular, and, like, he's pumping iron this episode, like, just that we got that last episode, and now seeing this version of Nate like that, too, I thought was kind of interesting. The only Z that needs to be at, um, the table is ZD, come on, or something like that, like, uh, I, I just thought that was awesome. Just And obviously the secret alliances between everyone. And Gary's the only one who seems to know like what's up. Like he's the one being like, oh, Gideon's acting a little different. Because granted, the moment she went serious mode and kind of put her human emotions aside, she broke up with Gary. And he was like, what? I thought this was, you know, which is sad. Because she started questioning everything. Because she's like, right, like what if me being... Because they ended up finding out like, right, because Gary thinks of this pocket dimension as home. That's why when... You know, because she isn't just a supercomputer anymore. She is a human, too. So she trusted her gut instincts because probably her gut instinct was, well, this is probably the best place to be because it is somewhere that evil Gideon can't find us because it is outside of time and space. So. But also it is, you know, a place important to Gary. So. It's just a combination of the two sides of herself, like the rest of the team isn't quite used to that yet. They're used to um, human Gideon a little bit, but they're so used to her, like her just being like 100% on it because she's a robot, uh, you know, uh, her uh, an AI intelligence, so uh, that's redundant, an AI, and um, that humans can be fallible in certain regards, but she's still doing the best that she can, so that ends up being a whole point in the episode, but I even love um, Astra going mom mode, mama bear mode, when it's like, Gary, this better be consensual, and it's like, no, 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 in fact, I'm the one that it's against, like, how long has this been going on? Well, if you count the foreplay, no, 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 it's like, no, back in, like, the Chernobyl thing is when we had our first, it's like, oh, that's actually really sweet, um, that, you know, it's like, they're so adorable together, I love it, I do love all the pairings uh, that end up happening, like, over the course of, like, this, like, all the people that are kind of together and everything it's actually really sweet i don't know there i don't think there's ever been this much in dating for a crew like amongst like even the dc stuff i'm like i don't know if i've ever seen like so much reciprocal like dating in the sense of like there's so many people amongst the group that are dating like I, mean, I guess the closest you could compare like and even then it's like not i mean i guess like riverdale would be the closest in that regard of, like, there's just so many people in the cast, like, amongst the characters that are dating. And in this, uh, you know, you have Sarah and Ava, you have Nate and Zari, but then there's also the other Zari, but now, like, 
Barad and Astra, and then Gary and um, Gideon. So you, you see what I'm saying? Like it's just interesting how that works out like that. I love the uh, dinner confrontation where it's just kind of I love that. Um, Gwen made his case clear of like, right, this is what we're going to do. You made a promise to me because she wrote it down on a note. She's like, fine, you want my word here. Granted, Sarah wasn't thinking, like, it's like, right, we're saving one person that wouldn't be too much of an effect on the timeline because they, they've they skewed that a little bit in the past. But it's just like, he's like, right, we're going to stop uh, Archduke Ferdinand's death. And you're like, wait, what? We're going to stop the entirety of World War One, which obviously everyone would want, but we don't know what the ripple effects of that is. Like, there's just certain points in time that need to stay the same because who knows how basically will implode the timeline because there's going to be such a massive ripple effect across. It's like, and I love that he's like, right, you gave me your word on this. And I love that Sarah's like, babe, babe, I would never do something like that. And just like, see what you did to like her and Ava having issues. Uh, Zari and Nate are back and forth, even to the point they bring out the other Zari. And she's like, oh, that actually makes a lot of sense that we're in like some hell reality show. It's like, it does? And she's like, yeah, because I have this instinct in to do this. So she picks up the drinks and throws it at their faces. And they're like, yeah, that, that feels about right. And then Spooner's still just, like, acting crazy, even to the point Ava's like, Spooner, put on some clothes! Um, once again, I just, I, it's so funny that she just, for whatever, no reason at all, it's not like they're out in the wilderness or anything like that, like, that would even be a part, it's just like, for no reason at all. Well, would, her justification was interesting, that the fact that she was like, right, if you're naked, it's kind of representative of you are bearing everything that you have nothing to hide, so it is symbolic in that regard, but still. And Gary's trying to say that the entire time he's trying to point out to everyone um, Gideon's not herself and that it's like, right, if we do any time traveling right now because she Gwen's like, oh, right, like, well, she's like listening to Gwen. It's like, right, we'll do this. But it's like, no, she time travels right now because she was scared, like, well, with my uh, human emotions, like, right now and stuff like that. What if I send this to the wrong place or something? And Gary's like, no, 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 she's in the wrong mindset right now. She'll sitting us in the middle of a tornado or something get us killed i guess it's like he also thought like right without her human emotions she's basically evil gideon right now like without really going into that thing that's just supposed to be an understanding but he ends up taking the helmet they don't answer this at the end of the episode he does put it in his stomach but i guess as long as it's not in there long because he didn't bite it he just swallowed it whole so i guess like as long as they like as long as this, he just pulls it out before like any stomach acid like burns through it it'll be fine I guess the justification could be. But I love that he's on the run and everyone's just like chasing after. And I love that Zari 1.0 is just sitting there like, okay. And she blocks him off at one point in time. So I don't know whether she's really all about it, whether she's just kind of caught up in the chaos. But she's like the most lackadaisical person about it. And obviously like the demon dude who's behind all this, the the cursed crew and everything is um, trying to push Bayrod to be like, oh, like, you know, everything's like... Uh, you, who wants to be around this guy? Like, you're kind of, like, kind of harsh in the vibe, but it's like, oh, like, your friend, they probably need the more chill and relaxed you, so go ahead. And in that moment, he has a real and beautiful moment where he's, he talk because Zari mentions it twice, because even, because um, everyone was kind of like, oh, that's jacked up. They're basically keeping up with the, the uh, Tarazis was a reality show that they were on, obviously a little play on, like, keeping up with the Kardashians. Um, but... He ended up being recast in the reality show, which is like, oh, that's that is super messed up. There's even a bit about like I think that's funny because the same thing happened in like what I immediately think of is like Family Guy when they were like re on a reality show for a bit. They ended up recasting like everyone eventually, but initially they recast. The first thing was they recast Meg. I, I love that. It's, it kind of made me think of that a little bit, but. Uh, him opening up about that and the trauma kind of associated with it that the reason why he gets high and stuff like that because it's a defense mechanism because having cameras in your face like with all your low moments like that's why that's why he was acting weird the way he was because I was like when he was projecting about when he's talking about oh she's projecting the moment he the moment uh, Astra heard from Zari like oh yeah like we replaced my brother because he was terrible on camera and stuff like that and I was like 
I was like, that's why you're acting weird because you don't like being on camera. And it's like, we really dive into that. The psyche, his psyche about why that is, is because every moment like was on camera, like him crying or feeling bad, you know, even it's like, oh, do you want to know what my first failure is? Don't worry. You'll be able to find it if you watch this show. I'm like, oh, that's, it got real in that moment. And I thought that was, yeah, like, yeah, the whole way he is, the reason why he's so chill and stuff, why he he leaned into that is because he needed, he didn't want to, he's like, right, I got to be a version of myself that won't give them anything. I got to be so chill and relaxed that I don't, I'm not open. Like, I'm, a, you know, he created, like, basically an alter ego, like, a, you know, a, like I said, a, a, a buffer between him and the cameras. And because he wasn't, like, Oh, that person they needed anymore. That's why they ended up replacing him. And I was like, and obviously Zari never really thought about it at the time. Like that, that was such a traumatic moment for him that that moment shaped who he is right now. Like obviously he talked about the show, like, you know, that um, sitcom like shaped him for who he was. But knowing like the reason why he gets high and stuff like that all the time now is also because he, because he believed that, um, he needed to be this version of himself so that no one would see the real him. It was it, it was his way to... Because he's scared and insecure. Like, right, like if people ever saw the real version of me, they'd run away. Which I'm like, dude, that hit home so hard. Like, I have my own insecurities and, like, there's a deep psychological thing where I connected on that of, like, right. Like, you're just under the assumption, like, no one's going to like the real you. So you present yourself in these different ways just... So, uh, you know, you know, you present different versions of yourself around different people just so you can kind of fit in a little bit more. I just, it's just, it, that moment in him saying all that kind of resonated with me. I was like, man, I feel that, you know? And, you know, scared that, you know, it's like, right, do my friends even know the real me? He was even saying, like, right, like, the girl I wanted to just ask out on a date. And it's just like, because now Astro's like, whoa, that's what this was about. And so, in this real moment, everyone from the crew, um appears because they're free now because they captured something real he was being honest and raw he was like yeah now i'm up here crying for everyone in hell to end up seeing but it was it was this very beautiful and touching moment i thought that was amazing and the crew ended up being free and so hell lost its number one reality show i guess who knows if they have other reality shows but at least this one shut down and everyone associated with that cursed crew is set free so Everything works out. Everyone mends fences. Uh, Zarya and Nate both make up. Because uh, she was talking about um, that voice of his, I guess, like the, what, what he was, that stereotypical kind of like, almost like Jersey Shore, like, thing he was kind of doing. Uh, kind of like a stereotypical, like, a thing he was kind of doing there. Uh, but they made up and just like, no, 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 we're good. Because they just got, once again, caught up in everything. Gideon apologizing because shutting off her emotions like that and breaking up with Gary. Um, obviously, Ava and Sarah, she's like, right, I'm sorry. I've kind of made you kind of take, you know, charge with everything. That's not fair. We are co-captaining this. And then also about the Gwen, Gwen thing of like, right. Uh, he's like, I kind of went extreme with the whole like trying to stop World War One because he's like, right, I don't know the ins and outs of... Um, I don't know the ins and outs of like time travel and stuff like that, the rules of it. She's like, we will help that one person, but we will find a smart way that won't, you know, end up destroying time, babe. So don't worry about it. Um, even Bayrod and Astra, um, she's like, he's like, yeah, I kind of embarrassed myself in front of the girl I have a crush on. And she's like, yeah. Well, he's like, had a crush on her for a while. And she's like, oh, maybe I have a little crush on you too. But it's like, basically, she's like, oh, like, don't you? And he's like, of course, I really want to. But he's like, right, I got to figure out who I am, like, sober. You know, so I can be like the best boyfriend you've ever had. And she's like, I like it. I was like, it was really, it was a really cute moment. I am curious though, like, has Astra ever dated before? Like, we haven't really touched on that. Like, she has been in hell ever since she was a little girl. So like, who, you know, and she had to be this person. She had to become who she became, which I think that was an interesting parallel because she knows what it's like to kind of, to protect yourself, becoming someone that maybe you don't like. Uh, you know, he had to become who he became because of the cameras and she had to become who she became just to survive hell. So like, I think that's kind of a neat little parallel uh, between them. And I love that Astra, uh, there's, 
there's freaking uh, Spooner still naked. It's like, oh my god, put some clothes on. She's like, honestly, it just feels so natural. Like, I still, like, I completely, like, forgot. Oh, yeah, right, I'm, I'm running, walking around naked. It's just like, that was just interesting. Uh, but like I said, everyone's making up and everything's good. Um, but then Gary and um, Gideon have a sit down with everyone about everything. They're like, no, 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 it's good. We already made these apologies. Like, no, 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 you owe an apology to me and Gideon because it's like, well, because for you know, because it's like, right, you guys make it seem like our relationship is kind of a bad thing. You guys kind of didn't support it. And even Gideon's like, right, you guys found love despite like all the chaos that we are all, we always end up ensuing. Like, you found each other, like, it under all that. And then on top of that, like, you're able to still do your job, but you won't give me and Gary that same respect. That like, right, we found each other. You just assume, like, oh, this is going to mess up and everything. But even everyone's like, yeah, you're right. We apologize. That's not, that wasn't cool of us. Like, it's like, right, in retrospect, it's like, right, why are we so judgmental about that, considering each one of our circumstances and how we found love and chaos, and yet we still do our job pretty well? Like, why can't we trust them to do the same thing? I think it's just like, oh, it's because it's Gideon, and then it's Gary, so I think that's what kind of threw everyone for a loop. But it's like, no, you're right. We're going to back you up. And I was like, yeah, it's really nice. It's like, cool. So it's like, right, uh, I love that... um, Gideon's like, you know, it's like, right, I love this having my human emotions because got all this soft, gooey feeling instead of wanting to, like, murder all of you. And she has a serious expression. And you're like, wait, what? And she's like, I'm joking. She's like, oh, I'm actually really funny. I'm like, oh, I love it so much. But it's like, right, they're going to trust her gut. So it's like, right, Gideon, where do you want to go? And she's like, right, you know, trusting my gut, we should go back in time to 1914 and stop the assassination of uh, Archduke Ferdinand. And everyone's like laughing. They're like, ha ha. And she's got this serious look on her face. And everyone's like, even Gary's like, wait, what? So my thought immediately was, wait, is, wait, what? Like, is it just because the human side of her is being like, no, we we can't just like let the travesty that was World War One happen. Like, we have the power to change it, you know, like any normal human want to. But obviously, there's the ripple effect of it. But then sitting here t- thinking about it a little bit more, I'm leaning more towards thinking like, could that be her way of trying to draw out evil Gideon? It's like, right, if we do something like that, that's because she's now had the better mindset of understanding where evil Gideon is coming from. So... Maybe that's a way to kind of like draw out evil Gideon and know exactly when she'll come because she'll come after us if we make a big enough splash time-wise. Maybe that's what she's thinking. Or maybe it is just a thing of, no, like we have a time machine. I am more human and like the human side of me, you know, because they've all dealt with that aspect of like, right, we have a time machine. Like you always had to deal with the stipulations of like not wanting to cause too many ripples. But there's a human side of you that wants to do a lot of good and fix a lot of wrong in history, you know? So... It's definitely going to be really interesting to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Until next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.